Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be answering some of your questions that I've collected over the past couple of weeks. I know I've been kind of MIA here a little bit. I've had just a lot going on, uh, but I'm still paying attention to you guys, still thinking about what questions you have uh, sent in my way, and uh, thankful for that. Thank you for trusting me to answer these questions. A uh, couple of questions here just to begin with. One uh, that I get probably more than any are young guys who are saying, how do I become an auctioneer? It's kind of the question you get whenever you're uh, starting out, you, you don't really know where to start. And I, I think a lot of guys wanna start by developing their auction chant. And while that is good, the best way to become an auctioneer is to find a school and go to it. Your state may not require you to go to an auction school. You may be able to go and just pay your money and get a license, but I would definitely recommend you go to an auction school. Go to one that has a reputation. Go to one that has instructors that know what they're doing, uh, that have proper credentials for what you wanna do. Uh, personal opinion here, that's all it is, personal opinion. If you wanna learn the livestock industry or uh, learning how to sell cattle and market livestock at auction, probably some kind of Western school would be better for you. Um, although livestock auctioneering is taught at most every auction school, going somewhere out West where they have that more abundantly would probably be the best thing to do. Somewhere like Missouri Auction School, Western College of Auctioneering, um, worldwide would be a good one as well. If you want to learn how to do real estate auctions, personal property, farm equipment, um, those types of things, uh, antiques especially, guys, I'm telling you, uh, Nashville Auction School, Kentucky Auction Academy, those are phenomenal, phenomenal schools. Um, I graduated from Nashville Auction School a long time ago, and uh, I wouldn't trade my education there for anything. So how do you get started? Find an auction school, do the courses. If they offer continuing education, be sure to do those uh, beyond what's required for your licensure. There's, there's no shame in getting more and more knowledge, more and more information. And even though you might be an expert in one thing, you're probably not in something else. So learn all you can. All right, so good, good question. Glad that you asked it. Uh, question number two is uh, a personal question. Who is your favorite auctioneer to listen to? Oh, that's a tricky question. There are so many good auctioneers that I love listening to. Uh, one in particular, I, I love the Ralph Wades and the Charlie Cummings. You know, they just have a masterful chant, and it's it's always a joy to listen to them. Um, trying to think of some guys that I listen to on a regular basis that are less well known. I cannot think of his name, but there is an I think he's an Amish guy who uh, sells a draft horse auction in Topeka, Indiana. And if you just YouTube that, he'll come up sells these, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar draft horses. And his chant is, it's very exciting. He gets the crowd into it and I just love listening to, to him. I, I apologize, I don't know his name. A couple of others that I love listening to. My dad is an auctioneer. I've listened to him my whole life and uh, I love listening to my dad uh, be an auctioneer. Brandon Neely, Brandon Neely is another guy that just has kind of one of those Laffy Taffy bouncy ball type chants that I love so much. Um, so those are a couple of guys that, that when I'm riding down the road and I want to listen to an auction chant, they're, they're who I listen to. Um, excellent question. Uh, another question. This guy says, I'm having trouble uh, keeping my breath behind the block. Uh, what are some tips that I can do to work on my breathing? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know you. I don't know what you do. I would say, first of all, that if you smoke or if you drink carbonated beverages before an auction, that you need to quit doing both of those if you're having trouble with your breath. Now, I know some of you guys, you can sit up there, you know, with a Mountain Dew or a Coke all day long and it not bother you. Uh, that carbonation causes gas bubbles in your stomach, causes you to burp a lot. And a lot of guys have trouble, uh, you know, breathing with when you're trying to deal with indigestion and things like that. So anything like that, you can you can cut out. That's fine. If you smoke as an auctioneer, all you're doing is hurting yourself. And I'm not trying to be rude about this, but you know, just quit or maybe quit the day before a sale and then go until the end of the sale before you have your next cigarette. So uh, if you smoke, you're, you're really just hurting yourself on breathing. Now, if none of those apply to you, then I would say evaluate your chant. Is your chant really breathy? Is it really choppy? And one way to work on that is as you're driving down the road and you're practicing your chant, just sing instead of chant, okay? I like to call it the auctioneer's song rather than the auctioneer's chant. 
uh, because a chant sounds like something that you're standing outside the courthouse with a picket sign doing. A song is something that's rhythmic, and that's what we want as an auctioneer. We want a rhythmic chant. All right, so as you're driving down the road, you can be like, I'm bid one daughter down here and two daughter here and a two daughter would you give a two daughter down here and a two daughter and three daughter here down three daughter and you can do it with any uh, number bracket I'm bid ten daughter here down twenty down give twenty daughter down here would you give me twenty daughter would you give twenty and twenty and twenty daughter down here down ten daughter down twenty you know it, it it provides rhythm and as we sing we're using more of our diaphragm. So developing that sing songy type chant is going to be what helps you with your breath the most. Um, making sure that you're breathing from your stomach rather than your chest is also going to be very helpful. Uh, excellent question and I hope that helps. One final question for this video and that is, uh, what filler words should I use to start in my basic chant? Well, it depends on what filler words you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with uh, more choppy filler words like I'm at a bid or would you give or do you want to be or something like that then I would suggest starting with your number brackets and then about every third or fourth number repetition inserting one of those so it's not going to be uh, the, the, the filler word isn't going to be inserted immediately after the number like a lot of your catalog auctioneers would do. So it's like, I'm better than one, not a better than you're not to get down 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 to get uh, if you want to do something like dollar bitter or dollar down here, I would recommend doing it in terms of pitch. So when you raise your pitch and when you lower your pitch, that's when you hit that filler word because it's going to keep audience's attention. I'm better than better than you're not going to two and a half five. You're not better than five dollar. I'm better than five. You're not better than five dollar down seven and a half. You're not better than you're not going to seven and a half. You're not better than seven and a half. So you notice my pitch inflection goes up and down with my filler words. As you insert those filler words, you're developing rhythm. That's really the only reason filler words are there is so we can keep rhythm and keep audience attention. So as you're trying to figure out what filler word works best, figure out how you sing. Figure out how uh, your chant naturally comes, and try to keep nerves at bay. Okay, and actually I said that was the last question. I just remembered one more that I wanted to be sure to address in this video. And that is, how do I get more comfortable being in front of people? Well, as a public auctioneer who is calling bids in front of people, this is definitely something that you need to be comfortable with. Um, I know a lot of people go to auction school to get their auction license so they can conduct online auctions. Uh, in some places, you have to have an auctioneer license to do that. In other places, you don't. And that's a huge hot topic, guys. Uh, those of you who are going to the IEC, that might be an interview question is about online auctions. It typically is. Um, so people go to auction school, they do online auctions, and then they get a client that says, well, I want to do a live farm equipment auction. I don't want you to put it online. Okay, well, we don't want to turn down their business because that's money for us, but what do we do if we're not uh, good being in front of people? A couple of things that I would suggest. Number one, if you are absolutely dead set on not being in front of an audience, hire a contract auctioneer, someone like myself, who only does live auctions, to come and sell the auction for you. Okay, uh, so have a set price. You're going to pay them $500, $300 for the day, depending on how long the sale is. Or, you know, y'all negotiate that. But hire someone to come in who's good behind the block, who knows what they're doing, and go that way. If you are dead set on doing it, I would recommend uh, joining your local Toastmasters club, which is a public speaking club. It's not going to help you develop an auction chant, but you're going to be put in front of situations where you're standing up in front of people a lot. And that's perfectly well and good. You need to be up in front of people. Uh, try to find opportunities to go to local schools where you can talk to uh, their, their youth there about the auction business. Anything you can do to get up in front of people because it's exposure therapy. The more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Okay, um, Those things are very, very helpful. If that scares you to death, Maybe try making uh, Instagram reels, TikToks, YouTube videos where you're talking to a camera and you're telling people about the auction. You're telling people about your business. You're educating people. You're, you're uh, answering questions like I'm doing now. Even though the people that you're talking to are not actually there, 
you will have an audience, and if you have a good audience, people will comment and things like that, and that will give you interaction with people. It's all these baby steps. We have to learn how to crawl before we can walk and walk before we can run. So that's all it boils down to, guys. Exposure therapy. Uh, if you want to do something and do it well, get out there and actually put yourself in that position to do it. Okay. Uh, I've enjoyed answering these questions today. I hope they've been helpful and I look forward to doing some more videos here about chant development, hopefully in the near future. And um, these videos might become sparse because uh, I'm working on a PhD and working on my dissertation now. And that really eats up a lot of my time, but I have enjoyed this. I hope you have, hope you find it beneficial and we'll see you in future videos. If you have more questions, comment below. Let me know what your questions are and uh, we'll address those in some videos as well. All right, we'll see you.